Okay, so we're here today to, uh, to talk about the public rollout for the uh, three major plans that are, are required by the consent decree uh, for the city to uh, be in compliance. Uh, the community and problem-oriented police plan, uh, the staffing plan, and the recruitment plan. Uh, they're all three rolled out together uh, because they're related to each other. Uh, CPOP is probably the heart of the consent decree in terms of, of how the city is going to go about building relationships between the police department and the community. Uh, we can't do that unless we have proper staffing, and we can't have proper staffing unless we have a, a successful recruiting program. So uh, these three plans are all related, but they're all, so the, really the heart of this is, is the community and problem oriented police plan. Uh, right now uh, the plans are on the city's website. Uh, there is a link to a survey that we're asking the public to fill out to give us feedback on these plans. Uh, that link in the survey will be available to be filled out until uh, middle of July. Uh, we, have, we will then collate all the, the community feedback. We'll make some final drafts of the plan, uh, all three plans, and then we'll seek court approval for, for uh, the plans as submitted. Uh, the, the department is, is already in the process of, of uh, designing a training program for all the, the uh, officers uh, and we anticipate that the plans will, will become effective uh, towards the end of this year, the first part of uh, 2019. So I want to commend, uh, as I uh, have said before, all of these folks that are around this table, uh, the leadership of the police department, uh, clearly the, the, the vision of the mayor in getting these programs to where they're at right now for and ready for public input. So it's a very positive uh, position for the city. It's a very positive step and a huge step in compliance with the consent decree. And if you could just talk us through just a little bit the basics of where we are right now with the consent decree and how, how this relates to coming sure. into compliance. Uh, sure, we've had a, there, there are a lot of uh, very important projects that the consent decree requires, that some of which we have accomplished by rewriting all the force policies for the department and training the entire department on those force policies. We've, uh, we've had our bias-free policing uh, policies approved by the court and we're in the process of developing a training for those. Uh, the CPOP uh, is, is, again, uh, uh, the heart of the consent decree. So we're two and a half years down in, that, uh, in a five-year process. Uh, so, uh, w and we're hoping to finish this within that, that time frame, if not before, uh, and uh, uh, we, we feel very positive about where we're at with it right now. Well, what's important, what the community needs to know about this is, uh, the CPOP plan pretty much outlines how all officers are going to become community policing officers. It's something that the chief has said is one of our major goals. Uh, it comes down to two basic things, how we engage the community to not only build relationships and partnerships, but also how we engage the community to identify uh, and ultimately solve some of the problems that are out there in the community. So one of the things that you're going to see uh, with this plan is you're going to see officers outside of cars engaging with the community, not only officers that are assigned to the Bureau of Community Policing, but all officers. Uh, the bulk of the engagement will come from those that are assigned to basic patrol operations in the neighborhood districts, but it's also going to come from uh, other units within the division. Uh, for instance, the NICE unit uh, has already been out and about engaging the community, uh, not only at events, but just randomly and impromptu uh, engagement things, but also uh, bureaus like our Bureau of Traffic, who uh, engage the communities at these same type of events and in schools and everything else. Traditionally, those things were handled primarily in the Bureau of Community Policing with the CPOP plan. It's now a responsibility for all officers, no matter where they're assigned. And you say that about 20% of the officers on duty time should be directed towards community engagement. engagement. Can you explain a little bit how that would work? Yeah, that's our expectation. Uh, we know that some weeks uh, you may, it may be so busy that there are a lot of things going around in the city that you can't spend 20% of your day that week doing, uh, doing community engagement activities, but another week you can. So at the end of the year, we're, we're going to assess how much time are the officers actually devoting to community engagement activities. And the 20% is an expectation and a goal. Some officers, some districts, some shifts may far exceed the 20%. But it's just our way of saying this is what we are expecting you to do. And the difference here is even though um, our officers have always engaged in community policing, that we are 
tracking it now and we're also training relative to it, correct? Correct. The CPOP training uh, will begin, the training on this plan and our expectations are going to begin in uh, July of this year. Uh, but again, officers are engaged in the community and have been engaged in the community long before the consent decree. What this plan does is puts in a mechanism in which we create an expectation and then we track it and we assess how we're doing. So one of the major differences now with recruitment is we have a dedicated recruitment team. It's myself and four other individuals and full time we're out recruiting, answering uh, inquiries about employment in the public safety divisions here at the City of Cleveland. One of the biggest things that we've also changed is going to an online application system. Uh, it used to be paper, or we used to give a test one day, everyone had to come downtown and take the test. That's not the case anymore. We have multiple testing sites, multiple days and times people can choose to take the test. And one of the good things about having folks who are there to answer an applicant's or potential applicant's questions all the time is you don't get lost in it. Um, so if you had a family member on the division, it was easy for you because you have the information right there. Well, now you have the information still we have um, with us, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. You can stay in constant contact with us. The academy pay has gone from $10.50 to $15 an hour. At 22 weeks, while you're still in the academy, you go to $51,000 a year. So that's a whole month before, before you graduate the academy. We were just talking earlier, and a whole lot of us had a lot of folks to pay back when we finished at 1050 an hour or seven or whatever it was when you went through. So that's a, a big difference. Um, we've instituted a new uh, entry level exam that screens for those characteristics that we're looking for in good patrol officers. The cognitive thinking, emotional maturity, team orientation, things like that. Also, we will be instituting a new psychological service, a process. Um, hopefully that, that will be in place by the end of June. So that's huge because to implement the community problem and oriented policing plan, you know, you have to have those officers who have that demeanor to want to engage and be a partner with the community. What are some of the challenges that you face when you're out in the community? A lot of times people think, you know, unless they wanted a criminal justice uh, career, that they are not cut out for policing, which is just not true. Again, we're talking about those skill sets that are so necessary for positive interactions and engagements. Because we can teach you all the other stuff. We can teach you about laws. We can teach you about um, our policies and things like that. We can't teach you about how to engage with a cross se uh, section of the community. We can't teach you how, how to care about people and be compassionate. So um, that's one of the things that we find when we go out and just talk to folks and they say, oh, no, I'm not interested. Well, why not? Tell me why not. Tell me what you do now. You know, it may be that you have a skill set that translates very nicely into policing. So that's how we're addressing those things. So the staffing uh, allocation was taking everything that we do currently today, calls for service, the implementation of the CPOP plan, the 20%, and the administrative time that's necessary to complete all of our tasks in a day. It was went through there uh, into the weeds of making sure that that staffing is available. Um, it really hinges on the recruitment side. So if I had the perfect world of all the bodies I needed to handle this, what would that, what would that look like? So we looked at patrol section, we looked at the support section and the specialized units. What is it going to take to allow all this to happen? And that's where the staffing plan comes into play. It actually gives us a number that we have a goal towards hiring to hit that um, area and then move forward into the field um, after recruitment and get them into the CPOP side of this. And so as, from a, a standpoint of where we are now and where we hope to be, what, what do those numbers look like? So currently the division has around 1,510 officers and that includes supervision all the way up to the chief. Um, our goal is to get to into the 1,700 range, the very low 1,700s. So we're looking at about a 200 person increase. Well, on the street level, that's huge. That's a, a, more officers in the street, that's more CPOP time available um, to make a difference. So the, the bulk of the officers, that the new hires, would be um, in the basic patrol ranks? Right. Every, most of that increase would be in our uh, patrol section. So the goal is to increase the number of officers on the street for just responding to calls for service? Right. And all these calls for service were actually based on time of day. So you would see more officers during the daytime and afternoons where the bulk of our calls are handled. Um, and then that would give us uh, more time to involve 
the CPOP, which is we do on every single call. Um, we handle the call for the client, and then all of a sudden they tell us about three or more things in their neighborhood that they would like to see the police handle. So that's part of that engagement time to the commander's point. And to make this seem um, a little bit easier to digest, there's also a plan to implement technology into this too, so people can do more online reporting. So yeah, that would, as part of our staffing and the CPOP, it gives us more time from administrative aspect into the community policing. One of the avenues, we currently already have an online reporting, but we're going to try to make that a little more robust and add more crimes to it. Um, we're also doing some in-car dispatching that allows people, the officers not to do duties anymore, which takes time. So all those things add up, even though they, they seem small, the incremental time goes from 20%, maybe up to 30 or 40%. But depending on how quickly the officers or the, our residents start using some of this technology.